This week we're going to be looking at Millennium Development Goal number six, which has to do with combating HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases. As I talk about this week's resources, the pictures you'll see in the back are actually some photographs that I took last week at the only medical school here in Moldova. And it's located here in Chisinau. The facilities were good. You'll see they had, they had a nice library. They have uh, access to databases thanks to a relationship they have with the University of North Carolina. They have access to good medical databases. And so I just thought you might be interested in seeing these facilities as I talk. I'm not really going to comment on them because they're pretty self-explanatory, but I did think it was an interesting place to visit, and I was glad to have a chance to go there. This week, as each week, we're going to start by looking at the report on investing and development. We're up to Chapter 8. Chapters 8 and 9 essentially discuss the roles of non-governmental actors in working toward Millennium Development Goals. For instance, Chapter 8 has to do with what they call civil society organizations. They're using that term instead of, for example, non-governmental organizations because non-governmental organizations would also cover other sorts of private sector organizations such as businesses. So chapter 8 is specific to civil society organizations, and it does suggest that these organizations need to be on the front line regarding implementation, evaluation, monitoring, and they tend to be organizations that have been working on some of these issues for quite some time. Chapter 9 discusses contributions of the private sector, and in this context it's talking about private profit-making organizations as opposed to what we in the United States would consider nonprofit organizations. The bottom line biggest issue that all these goals deal with is poverty, the importance of private enterprises in providing jobs and services and things that people need are really vital. Chapter 9 discusses that. In addition, it gives some good examples of some interesting and innovative things that organizations have done, such as training and uh, making funds available for small entrepreneurs, community economic development stuff. So those two chapters deal with how specific types of organizations figure into the overall Millennium Development Goals. We're also going to read Chapter 11, which you will immediately notice we've gone from 9 to 11. We skipped Chapter 10. Chapter 10 deals specifically with Sub-Saharan Africa. If you're interested in that, you can look at it. But Chapter 11 looks at investment priorities in other regions around the globe. There's a section in there that relates to transition in CIS countries of Central and Eastern Europe. And so you could just read that section if you want. So we've got two weeks left in the class after this one. And we're going to keep working through this report on investing in development because I think that it's important background and foundational information to the rest of what we're trying to do and to the Millennium Development Goals in general. Next, as we look at uh, the background of Goal 6, as usual, we're going to look at the UN's report on progress toward achieving the goals. When you start to look at the statistics, the, the, the health issues around the world relating to infectious disease is just staggering. I mean, there are some countries in which more than 25% of the adult population is infected with HIV AIDS, malaria, which can be prevented pretty easily by finding ways to, with mosquito netting and things like that, or can be treated and cured with simple drugs, which are inexpensive and should be widely available. And yet, there's over one million deaths a year from malaria. Tuberculosis, another big problem, especially here in Eastern Europe, I think I've mentioned in the past, on occasion, uh, when I talk about some of my trips, one of the things that keeps coming up over and over again when you go to a clinic or a hospital is lung 
lung disease, and one of the major lung diseases they're talking about in spreading is tuberculosis. There is one report here that I want you to read, which is really your major reading for the week, I guess. It's a World Health Organization report titled Keep the Promise. It's about 84 pages. But as the Director General of the World Health Organization says in the foreword, this report explains some of the reasons for the slow progress and suggests solutions looks beyond the statistics to discuss strategic and policy areas where change is needed and support should be provided. As such, it summarizes WHO's contribution to debates on the MDGs and to the 2005 World Summit in September. So you get a feel for the importance of this report. I think it will help you understand both Going backward to, for instance, goals four and five on child mortality and maternal health, but also going forward to environmental sustainability and, and developing global partnerships. All those are part of this particular report. Then the UNICEF website on goal number six has some interesting stuff in terms of how these infectious diseases are affecting children. One of the statistics on that page says that malaria kills a child somewhere in the world every 30 seconds. And once again, as we talked about, it's a preventable problem. It's easy to prevent, easy to treat. So you'll see how UNICEF says that children are being affected and what UNICEF is doing about it. And then lastly, the in the background section here, you'll look at this week's Cool Planet Resources, the Goal 6 poster, and the Goal 6 activities. Then when we go to the next section on Goal 6 in Eastern Europe, once again we'll be looking at the World Bank's report on Millennium Development Goals, Progress, and Prospects in Europe and Central Asia. One of the first things that jumps right out at you when you look at that is, because it's in bold letters at the top, that this region is experiencing the world's fastest growing HIV AIDS rate. And as you go down, that's not the only problem here. Tuberculosis is significantly increasing in virtually every country that was part of the former Soviet Union. As we then look at specific countries, we'll look at Moldova as usual, but instead of Georgia, which we've been looking at the last few weeks, I found a interesting report on the Millennium Development Goals from Ukraine. And Ukraine is significant because as you start to look at the information on HIV rates, Ukraine is just exploding with HIV. It's a huge, huge problem there. So I think that this is an interesting week, certainly for health-related issues. And once you have a chance to go through these resources, I Hope you come out to the forums and we can discuss some of these issues there.